Okay, some big transfer news from Ipswich Town today. An exit. Andre Dazelle has moved on. Queen's Park Rangers have activated a £1 million release clause in the build midfielder's contract and he's heading to Loftus Road, Stuart Watson. What do we what do we make of this one? It's been in the works a little while, hasn't it? It has. That clause was inserted in Andre's contract. Uh, was it December time he signed that that contract, which I think surprised us and a few people that um that he signed that longer term contract. That now makes sense that there was that that option in there for a club to come in. So at least Ipswich Town have got some money, some decent money um, for him uh, instead of potentially having lost him for nothing this this summer anyway. Um, I think initially it's hard not to feel a little bit of sadness that it's, it's, it's an Ipswich boy. He's one of our own, a proper Ipswich boy as well, son of Jason, such high hopes for him um, that he has moved on. But also on the flip side of it, there has been a sense around the club for a while that a lot of things need need to change and um, maybe a fresh start for everybody might benefit all parties here. I've got no doubt in my mind that Andre can go on to bigger and better things. And if he does, Ipswich will get a nice little sell-on clause from that and, and maybe for Ipswich as well. It's just uh, just the right time to try something different where they're out of this juncture. It's an interesting one, isn't it? I think you're right. I think there could be benefits for, for both sides in it. But but to see an academy player not fulfil the potential that all of us thought that he had and probably still has, it is sad. Um, I'll always think back to that day at Hillsborough where he uh, he headed home, aged just 16, clad in orange with his dad in the crowd. And, and at that point, um, he had so much ahead of him, didn't he? But there's there's the obvious the obvious injury that happened on the opening day of the the seventeen eighteen season, which, which set him back so much, um, and it, it's it's been a bit of a difficult road for Andre, hasn't it? Up to last season, of course, where he he played more games than more games than anybody else. How are you going to remember Andre's Andre's time as an Ipswich player? I think he's had some weight on his shoulders because of the family name from day one. I interviewed. Jason and Andre, when Andre was 13 years of age and there was already hype and talk surrounding him at that stage that he could be even better than his dad, who obviously went on to, to play for Tottenham and, and was a, a very good player in his own right. So I think maybe maybe that hasn't helped. You talked about that opening day game against Birmingham, which Ipswich Town won 1-0 in, in 2017. He was absolutely bossing the game. He was purring that day and uh, it was just such... A cruel blow that he suffered that that knee injury, which set him back. I mean, the next two seasons were, were virtually wiped out for him. Even when he was fit after that, never got a run of starts, which I think every young player needs to, to build that confidence and get some rhythm. It was a, a run of two games here, a run of three games there. He was often sort of the full guy. Uh, so you're right. It was only up until this season that he's that he's been a regular starter for Ipswich Town and, and it was difficult circumstances for him to be a, a regular starter when the team wasn't necessarily functioning that well. It was the second year in League One. Um so it, it just feel like maybe it's it's reached its natural conclusion with, with Andre. And and I do think with his his vision, his range of passing, we know he can be an absolute joy to watch. That opening month of the season just gone. I thought he was exceptional to watch when Ipswich Town got off to a good start. The question mark against him would, would be then whether he did enough of the, the physical side of the game, uh, especially in, in League One. Does he need better players around him to, to be able to do that side of the game? I think with, with the Flynn Downs alongside him regularly this season, it could have been a different story. Someone's to do the dirty work for him. And maybe once he gets to the championship and he's got strikers and wingers on, on his wavelength for making those attacking runs, he might suddenly look like a really good good player. But um, I just don't know if, if now was the time that it was going to happen for him where Ipswich Town are at this mm. moment in time. I'd love to have seen what, what could have become in that 17-18 season if the injury hadn't happened. Because under Mick McCarthy, the, the central midfielders weren't really given the freedom to play necessarily. And... Andre was in in that, and he was still only it was probably still only seventeen at that point, wasn't he? Seventeen, maybe eighteen, but he was being given he was being given the license to play with freedom, to get on the ball, to take the ball from the back four, and and begin to play. And 
that wasn't something that Mick McCarthy gave midfielders the opportunity to do lightly, was it? And to, to, to trust an 18, 19 year old at, at that point to do it was huge. But sadly, as you've said, injury just chopped him down. And, and for the next two years, it, it just never, never came back. I, I loved watching him play with Flynn. They were on the same wavelength as, of each other in terms of movement, passing, quick movement. But sadly, Flynn had his own injury problems last season as well, didn't he? And we didn't get to see enough of that. Last season, like you say, I, I enjoyed, I really enjoyed the opening month, but I think Ipswich's football slowed down a little bit. And I think, I think that, that, that was tough for Andre because he was now having to pick holes in, in defences that were having time to kind of get back and, and compact themselves and not give him the freedom to play these balls. But hopefully the, the hope has to be for him that in a, in a league where hopefully QPR can play some, some quicker football and, and he can, and he can pull some strings in there and um, and see that where that goes for him. But it, it, this is going to be a theme for Ipswich this summer. This isn't the last departure, is it? And I think I think it's um, I think it's inevitable that some of these players that move on are going to go on and 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 do better things. And and maybe maybe you'll put eyes on them in a few months' time and and wonder why Ipswich let them go. But the hope has to be that the players coming in in their place um, sort of dampen that a little bit and it can work out for everybody yeah I think that the hope has to be everyone has to have goodwill for for Andre and, and Flynn if he moves on as well we know championship clubs are having a look at him they may well go on and I really hope they go on to bigger and better things but that does not mean that it's the wrong decision for Ipswich Town because Ipswich Town have got to do what's right for them right now to get out of League One and if that means a, a fresh slate uh, for some of these young players who have, have maybe been weighed down by the the mood surrounding Ipswich Town, the stagnation. Every we, we don't need to tell the story of how Ipswich have got to this point, but it's affected a lot of players there. And I think a clean slate in many ways could do wonders for Ipswich Town. And it could do wonders for these young lads to go away, experience living somewhere else, playing in a different team, playing with a different set of, of players as well. And hopefully it bags Ipswich some some extra money down the line and, and everyone's a winner. That has to be the hope with, with these conversations this summer. Well, there we are, a departure from Portman Road. A million pounds is the deal. Andre Dezel has left Ipswich Town for Queen's Park Rangers.